there, it's Nicole for Lawn Fawn, and today we're gonna create a Christmas scene card using lots of new components from the Fall and Winter 2017 release, as well as mixing and matching in a few older elements as well. Now I'm starting, I have already pre-die cut a bunch of things. I've got some white birch trees, some stitched mountains, and then of course the, the uh, this is not the landscape. I accidentally got these switched around. This is the portrait stitched um, hillside backdrop, which comes with lots of coordinating images. And there's a landscape version as well um, that you can mix and match, and they're just really awesome. Now, I've also used a stitched rectangle die to die cut a piece of vellum that's gonna back this. I die cut another piece of vellum from the landscape stitched hillside backdrop, mostly just the bottom edge. And I'm only gonna, I'm gonna trim it off, trim off the frame part up above and only keep those hills along the bottom. In this case, the hills are gonna become water. I am masking off the layers here and inking them up with Salty Ocean Distress Ink. I decided and opted to use traditional, or not traditional, but regular smooth white cardstock. This is Nina Smooth White Heavyweight Cardstock instead of Bristol or something like that. And you can see the colors are blending quite beautifully. I don't often use regular cardstock to blend on. However, this is a pretty small area I'm using a very light hand, and that way I think it really helps. I did spritz this with a little water. Originally, I kind of thought I might have one layer of water and one of snow, but I really felt like when I popped this off, I think both of them need to be water. It gives more depth and dimension to the design. Um, it doesn't feel like the otter's gonna be floating out in outer space, and you'll kind of see what I mean here. Um, if I didn't, have this border as water or didn't have a border of water in there, I feel like the otter's just kind of tucked behind a layer. Um, I kind of like two layers and you can tuck the element in between the two, I guess if that makes sense. So I'm gonna go ahead and ink up the second layer, again using post-it tape to mask off areas that I've either A, already inked, or B, that I don't want to have ink added to. I want the frame to be white. Spritzing with water, blotting dry with a paper towel. I love this look for water. Gives it a little bit of distressing, a little bit of interest. Looks like some bubbles underneath the water. So um, where those two colors meet, I'm just adding a tiny bit of ink where it might still be a little white. I wanna make sure that there's plenty of color. So there are the borders and the frame using that portrait stitched hillside backdrop. If you want your card to go the other way, you could always use the landscape. Now from that piece that die cut from the top of this panel, when I die cut this portrait stitched hillside, there was this inside piece. From that, I used a stitched mountain die to die cut the mountains. And I'm gonna layer my elements. I wanna put those mountains in place back behind. I want my frame and then I need the vellum rectangle so that I know where to stamp my greetings. These are greetings are all going to be from the Winter Otter stamp set. I'm gonna use a powder tool right there on the vellum window, ink up the greetings with Versamark ink and stamp that in the center. The vellum serves a couple of different purposes here. I designed the card, kind of laid out my elements, if you will, before adding this vellum layer and there wasn't going to be a good place to add my greeting. There's not really enough room along the bottom edge of the card, plus there's so much going on there, I felt like it would take away from the design or make it very bottom heavy. And at the top, I've got mountains, I've got snow caps, I've got birch trees, and it's gonna be awfully hard to stamp a greeting over those elements, if you will. So the vellum serves to give it that snowy look and also, is a great place for your greetings. And I'm also going to go ahead and stamp snowflakes from the Berry Happy Holidays stamp set. There's three snowflakes in this. Also, many other Lawn Fawn stamp sets have snowflakes, so if you wanna mix and match from those, you can as well. 
but I'm going to use some of the Berry Happy Holidays little polar bears and the fish and other things for my card in addition to the winter otter. So I went ahead and used these. I embossed the greeting or the sentiment with the brand new Lawn Fawn Silver embossing powder. The snowflakes are going to be stamped in Versamark and embossed with the Lawn Fawn White embossing powder. I simply put my embossing powders into these little plastic tubs and it makes it a little bit easier because I can tap off the excess into these, but you definitely don't have to do that. The new embossing powders are a fantastic addition to the Lawn Fawn collection. I love these and I think the white is, I'm a little picky about my white embossing powders. The white is phenomenal. It's so great. I got a little blue ink smudge on my vellum and I decided not to worry about it because it's going to be covered up by some other elements in the card. Sometimes that really bothers me and I might have you know, gone ahead and redone this because I accidentally touched it with an inky finger. But if you can hide it, go ahead and just keep it. It wasn't terrible, so I decided to keep it. I don't want to add a ton of color to the mountains. I want them to look like snow-covered mountains, but I need them to have a little tint of color. They're going to be back behind the vellum. So with a very light hand, I'm adding tumbled glass distress ink. And there's kind of what it's going to look like. Plus, I'm going to have some trees. I think the trees need a little bit of color, but again, I don't want them to have a lot of color either. Just a touch of color. So for those, I'm going to add just a tiny bit of pumice stone distress ink and try to keep that color to a minimum, mostly along the edges. I'm going to be trimming off parts of the trees anything that goes down below the water edge or up above where the frame is going to meet on the card. Just kind of a messy inking. This will be behind the vellum. It'll be a little disguised. And I only want a hint of color so that it shows up enough that you can see that there are trees in this snowy scene. I'm going to use my frame as a guide to add some adhesive to a white top fold card base and replace the mountains there in the scene. Add my little snow caps to the mountains. They add texture, they add another layer, and really add to that snowy feel. I am going to take a pair of scissors and snip off parts of these that hang over the edge. It's going to make the card lay nicer. Next, I am going to take my birch trees, and I decided they're a little tricky to get adhesive on, so I'm using the Xyron sticker maker for these. I used these for another card for the August Inspiration Week, and I used the Xyron sticker maker for that too, and it makes it so much easier. Again, I'm just snipping off the excess because it's going to make the rest of the layers lay a lot flatter, a lot nicer, if you snip off any of the extra. So here's my background, there's my frame, and here's kind of what it's going to look like. And then I've got to add all of my cute little critters and other elements. I'm going to attach the frame now to the vellum. I'm using a little score tape around the sides. It's a nice strong adhesive. The glue glider along the bottom edge, it's too wide for the frame, that's why I didn't use it there. And then I'm going to place my vellum layer with the greetings and snowflakes directly behind that. On the finished card, I decided to go ahead and add additional snowflakes. So in the finished project, you're going to see quite a few more snowflakes in the background. I did go ahead and attach this vellum along the bottom edge. I kind of wish I hadn't, but I'm going to show you how I get around that because I want to tuck some of my fish behind the vellum so that it appears that the fish are swimming underwater. I'm ready to stamp all of the rest of my elements now and color them in so that I can finish the card. I've got polar bears and fish and a little bucket of fish and a little um, floating piece of ice from the berry 
Happy Holidays stamp set, and then the Otter and Candy Cane from the Winter Otter stamp set. I'm stamping all of these with jet black ink. This is the Lawn Fawn ink that's perfect for Copic coloring. It works great with alcohol ink markers. So if you have some sort of alcohol ink markers, this is a fantastic ink for that. It's not going to bleed when you color. I did stamp the little um, hole in the ice for the polar bears, but I'm not using it on this card. I originally kind of thought I would try to use that if I kept the snowy border and I wasn't thinking when I stamped my images and I stamped that, but it's not really going to work with this design. So instead I stamped the ice block. The colors of markers I'm using are shown across the bottom of the screen. E40, 43, 44 are for the otter. R24 and 46 are anything that is red in the design. This is a pretty short list of Copic markers for me. A lot of repetition in marker colors. YR31, 24, and 27 for all of the fish. Fish in the bucket, these three fish. In fact, I did stamp two additional fish after I had done all of these. Sometimes you get to that point in your card making where you've adhered all the elements you thought you would need, and you still need a little bit more to balance it out. You'll see that as I start to put the card together, that a couple more fish underwater are really going to add to the scene. And repetition of images is especially for something like this, like the fish, works really well in this design. Some cool grays are added to the polar bear. They don't really add a lot of color. The polar bear is still gonna look white in the finished card, but this, these cool grays add a nice bit of shading so that the image doesn't appear so flat and looks more like the rest of the images. Some cool grays for the bucket of fish as well. And finally, I have the block of ice, which I wanna add some nice cool blues to, I'm trying to find the right colors for this. And I decided on B14 as my darkest and then B0000 and B000. Get that block of ice all colored in. I will take the coordinating very happy Christmas or very happy holidays rather and winter otter and die cut those with the coordinating dies. Now some tweezers are going to help me tuck these images underneath the vellum. This is where I was saying I wish I would have waited to attach the vellum. However, I'm able to take some tweezers and kind of place those underneath there. They are a lot thinner than my fingers, so I'm not going to tear the design. A good pair of tweezers is always helpful for lots of little crafting things. Have my little bears and their bucket of fish floating on their little iceberg, the otter floating underneath the water holding his candy cane, and then all these fish underneath the water. I'll add a couple more, some additional snowflakes, add glitter detail to my snowflakes with the Stardust glitter pen, and my card is all finished. Thanks for joining me today for this winter themed scene card featuring Lawn Fawn stamps and dies. Please be sure to check out the Lawn Fawn blog for more information. Thanks for joining me today and we'll catch you next time.